Hello, welcome back to Man V Film. It is time for some more announcements from Vinegar Syndrome's partner labels. Bunch of titles here, some of which I am super interested, some of which I am not. And to be honest, this is one of those months where I probably won't buy anything. Not because I don't want to, just simply because I am tapped out more than I expected to be after the VS sale and my bank account needs a breather. So let's just dive in and look at some of these titles anyway. We have, um, first up we have Polystyrene, I Am A Cliché, a, a documentary. Polystyrene was the first woman of colour in the UK to front a successful rock band and a key influence on the riot girl and Afropunk movements. But Polly didn't leave behind, didn't just leave behind a cultural footprint. She was survived by a daughter, Celeste, who became the steward of her mother's legacy and demons, which plagued Polly's life and scarred the pair's relationship. With narration by Ruth Nega, this film follows Celeste's journey to better understand Polly as an icon and mother. 96 minutes, Region A Blu-ray, a Q&A from South by Southwest, a selected scene commentary, a booklet featuring essays. Looks interesting, would probably be a one-time watch for me, um, and, and as you can see here, if, if, I don't know if it says, but you know, the partner labels are really taking a hammering this month, down to 834 of the slipcover version left already. Next up, we have Video Violence 1 and 2 from Terror Vision. A husband and wife open a video store in a new town and, be and come to find out the locals only rent horror films and the occasion triple Xer and decide to make their own snuff videos. Now, this is a two-disc region A set, archival interview with Gary Cohen, new interview with Paige Price, new interviews with Mark Dolson and Mark White Tech, new interview with Robert D'Amico, shot on videos that wouldn't die documentary, 1994 radio promo, English subtitles for the deaf and hard of hearing, and more to be uh, confirmed according to other sources. Now, this sounds pretty great, and Video Violence, the first one, definitely has a pretty fantastic name about itself. I'm not sure. The price is a little bit pricey with the um, discount taking it down to like $35. I really need your guys' feedback on this. This is one I would like to order. I would definitely pick up at some point, I think, if you push me in the right direction. So please let me know. I'm not a connoisseur um, of shot and video stuff. In fact, some of it looks just downright awful. Please let me know in the comments your thoughts on this one and whether I should go for it or not. Next up, we have Red Lips from Satin's Core. Desperate for cash, young Caroline agrees to be injected with an experimental serum by an unscrupulous blood bank doctor. She soon finds herself transformed into a ravenous vampire, stalking the streets of New York City with an unquenchable lust for blood. After killing her doctor and a random string of unfortunate strangers, Caroline crosses paths with Lisa, an innocent woman stranded in the city after a breakup with her former girlfriend. The two broke and star-crossed lovers navigate through the city's desolate clubs and hotels, fueled only by their sexual lust and symbiotic need for companionship. When Lisa finally learns of Caroline's murderous proclivities, she becomes a willing participant in her vampiric crimes until an unfortunate encounter with an indignant pimp leads to tragedy. Hmm. Um, so it's a region-free Blu-ray, maybe 77 minutes, audio commentary with writer, director, seeing red, interview with the director, vintage interview with actress Getty Chasen uh, from the 1994 Chiller Theatre Expo, Distortion is a Woman, The Blood Transgressions of Red Lips, a video essay, Stills Gallery, reversible cover and English subtitles for the deaf and hard of hearing. Just, you know, not not my cup of tea, I don't think. Um, yeah. 
that we'll leave it there. Next, we have uh, Giroud Departou uh, from Pulse Video. I can't show you the covers because of that saucy nudity that's on it. This is a Jess Franco movie. The first collaboration between Franco and the Brigitte Lahey. Uh, Lorna and Tom are a couple of low-life hustlers making a living in the skin trade, selling their sights on the naive Jenny. They coax the beautiful virgin home from a nightclub for an evening evening of debauchery only to drug and sell her into white slave network. However, they quickly discover her father is a millionaire and hoping for an even bigger payday, decide to demand a hefty ransom. But now they're left with a problem, as they must kidnap Jamie back from the pimps who now own her. From the perverse mind of Franco comes Gibril de Partout, a brutal tale of sexual torment and revenge set against the picturesque backdrop of Lisbon. From 1978, region-free Blu-ray uh, video interview with Franco biographer uh, Stephen Thrower, video interview with lead actress Bridget Lahey discovering her work with Franco, and this is well, there's 250 left in stock, so that's went really quickly. Um, you know, Franco's something I'm not, or someone I'm not particularly familiar with again I'd like to hear what you guys have to say about it, it seems uh, fairly cheap with the discount again but still, I'm not sold in that one either next up we have Superior from Factory 25 when Marianne is on the run she goes to the only pl place she knows is safe, her childhood home She's greeted by her estranged sister Vivian, a stay-at-home housewife struggling to conceive and on the verge of a failing marriage. Though the two are identical twins, they live opposite lives. Marianne's mysterious return disrupts Vivian's small-town routine, and the sisters must learn to reconnect and reconcile. When Marianne's haunting past finally catches up to her, their separate worlds collide, catapulting both sisters into grave danger. Uh, from 2021, 99 minutes, region free Blu-ray commentary uh, with a bunch of people. <laughs> Short film, Valeria. Uh, Future is the film of female post-screening Q&A. A trailer, 28-page booklet and subtitles for the deaf and hard of hearing. This one, this one looks particularly interesting. And, you know, initially seeing the cover, um, the artwork, scenes of the movie I I wasn't too curious but then I watched the trailer and it just it just looks interesting now I'm, I'm I want to see reviews of this one I would like to see the movie I don't know if I want to own it until I've seen it um, this is kind of one I would definitely want to try before I buy it being a recently new one if I can find it streaming it's probably a decent quality i would imagine next up we have potato dreams of america from dark star an autobiographical comedy about a boy growing up in the collapsing ussr his mail order bride mother and uh, him escaped to seattle in the 90s the film is an immigrant's take on the american dream providing uh, that life is often stranger uh, than fixing looks kind of funny like the initial start of it with the young potato that's the, the character's name it looks kind of humorous and entertaining it's a regionally blurry director's commentary behind the scenes featurettes introduction by the actors actor interviews deleted scenes mini documentary little potato short films rachel's don't run and rosalka capitol hill web season season one trailers and subtitles for the deaf and hard of hearing not one uh, I'm going to rush it by. Possibly be interested in seeing this one as well. Uh, not a pickup for me. Next up, we have uh, Air Doll from the Canalog. Now, this is Coriada, and it is a present day fable for the increasing disconnect we find in urban life. Hirokazu's Koreeda's Air Doll transports the Galatea myth to present day Tokyo. A life size Air Doll lives in a shabby apartment in Tokyo. She cannot speak, she cannot move, but she is the only companion to her middle-aged master has. 
he talks to her, puts her in a bath and makes love with her every day after he returns from work. The routine life is disrupted when fantasy turns into reality. The air doll suddenly becomes to life, filled with a soul. Like a newborn baby, she doesn't understand what's going on around her, but she sees a world waiting to be explored outside the apartment. I won't read any more, it gives a little bit away. Um, Corrieda's first movie from 2009, 116 minutes. It's a region A Blu-ray, Q&A with the filmmaker and actors at the Japanese premiere, footage of the world premiere at the 62nd annual Cannes Film Festival, behind the scenes trailer and ugly subtitles again. Another curiosity, Corrieda is a big draw because it's Corrieda. <laughs> he turned out to be a wonderful director, a real master, and I am somewhat curious. Again, I don't know if I would jump on it straight away. It's going to hang about a while. I would be happy to wait and see reviews on this one as well. Next up, we have the time-bending mysteries of Shaharam Mokri from Deaf Crocodile. This is the one that I'm probably joint most excited about this month. Um, what is time? What is memory? Are we in the past or the present or some strange, unknowable hybrid of the two haunted by arsonists, bloodsuckers, serial killers and phantom images of our own selves. The films of Iranian director Shaham Mokri straddle the line between genre and art house cinema. Whether Morbius strip-like meditations on classics, 1970s American slasher films, Fish and Cat, political thrillers, Careless Crime, 1980s new wave sci-fi vampire movies, Invasion, or off Beat Jaramush meets Tarantino indie mysteries Ashkan, The Holy Ring and other stories. It's a small wonder that Abbas Kiristami in the last 24 frames left a cryptic message on screen in Persian that simply read Shaharam Mokri. I, I don't know why. I, I can't put my finger on it. It could be that I've got a growing appreciation for Death Crocodile, but man, this sounds terrific. Behind the scenes or behind the mind of Shaharam Mokri, 22 minutes interview with the directly director, nearly four hours of Q&A and a four-disc Region A Blu-ray set, English subtitles. Four movies um, with the disc out, takes it down to under $40, 10 bucks a movie. That's something I can deal with. I like the look of these. They look just weird unusual um, and, and I'm 100% and this this is exciting um, I don't know if I've seen many Iranian movies as soon as I have the money I will be making a purchase for this you will be subjected to the reviews whether you're interested or not the clicks will prove that one way or another uh, but this this makes me genuinely excited it's the reason I love being a film fan when you see something like this and you just you're excited it looks great next up we have night ripper from culture shock um fiend disembowels fourth young woman reports the newspaper the ripper is stalking the city and it's all anyone can talk about models all over town are ending up in the wrong side of a razor sharp blade police are baffled by the surgical precision of the corpse mutilation and their only lead is David, a local photographer who knew the couple of murdered women. As the beautiful bodies pile up, David's world turns upside down and the street runs red with blood. From 1986, this 86-minute is region-free Blu-ray has an interview with the director, uh, interview with actor Larry Thomas, interview with actress April Oda, full-length commentary by the movie Melt Grindhouse and Exploitation podcast, Extended gore shots behind the scenes still gallery, culture shock releasing trailers, and subtitles for the deaf and hard of hearing. Plot sounds amazing. Uh, again, I just. I'm just not sure on these kind of movies. So, again, probably another pass for me. Next up from Canadian International Pictures, who I think this is their 
third release is it maybe fourth uh, and they've released wildly different movies so far um, this uh, mixing lively testimonials from unforgettable women at the forefront of mid-century lesbian bar culture with scripted segments that take the Hollywood melodrama in provocative new directions forbidden love uh, as an eye-opening cultural history and one of the most memorable Canadian films of the 90s, with a soundtrack of late 50s and early 60s hits. In the 50s, a wave of lesbian pulp literature emerged, exploring the then taboo subject in vivid, sensationalistic detail. When the writers often took a critical, moralistic view of gay life, they provided a jumping-off point for women still discovering their suppressed sexual desires. So it's a region-free Blu-ray, scanned uh, 2K from the interpositive audio commentary, a second audio, audio commentary, the Anna Bannon Chronicles, um, a new interview with the Queen of Lesbian Pulp, Cinema Politica Q&A, uh, EPK interview with the directors, afterward booklet featuring reflections, um, reversible artwork and subtitles for the deaf and hard of hearing. So talking about... Uh, pulp novels that, that came out, uh, you know, interesting, probably a one-time watch. It seems as if a kind of documentary mixed with scripted moments. Um, curious, but, but probably a pass for me as well. Next up, we have Apocalypse After, which I'm sure has been released before, or I've heard of it somewhere before. Um, or Yes, this is the... French anthology movie, uh, limited edition slipcover to 500 units, and it's gone. <laughs> uh, do have the standard edition. Let's see. Aging starlets fight over a gross piece of flesh that inspires sexual devotion. A woman finds inspiration in the animation of dead animals. A certain Valerin Borovchik makes his way through a cruel life and a transgressive director keeps searching for films that will make her spectators' hearts turn in their thoracic cages. From the visionary director of Wild Boys and After the Blue comes a collection of three plus hours of short works. Yes. Um, Region A Blu-ray trailers for Altered in Innocence and Mondo Macabro titles. Maybe it was a Mondo Macabro release in Italy subtitles. Again, I don't need three hours of short movies. Pass. Next up, we have Final Flesh from Agfa and Drag City. Must be another collaboration. Final Flesh is unlike anything you've ever seen on Earth and other places. In the early 2000s, Vernon Chapman uh, wrote a four-part screenplay about a family who lives adjacent to the ground zero of a thermonuclear disaster. Instead of sharing the finished script with Hollywood, Chapman sent <laughs> each part to four different companies that specialise in custom adult fetish videos, and Final Flesh was born. Like the custom song poem craze of the 70s, this metaphysical brain stabber is an outside miracle of biblical proportions filled with nudity, brilliant sight gags, rubber monster masks, inventive toilet humour, and no sex, this surrealist spectacle is of the highest order. 71 minutes from 2009. It's a region free Blu-ray, preserved in the original digital video master. Introduction by On Cinema's Greg Turkington. Lay and Love music video. New alternate score. PFFR commercial. Outtakes, original trailer. And subtitles for the deaf and hard of hearing. Oh, isn't that lovely? Um, I'm somewhat curious. I don't know why, because everything about it screams awful, but also I am curious to see that awfulness. Um, I won't buy it. I'm not buying anything. But I will keep an eye on this one. Maybe 101 Films will bring it to the UK. We shall see. Last and definitely not least we have another release by Subculture USA, 4K release of Out of Order. Now, um, Deadlock was phenomenal. I've been waiting to see what this company is going to do next. They're releasing another 4K. 
I am very interested. On a Friday evening, four people board the elevator in an office building. After it gets stuck, they soon realise that their cries for help go unheeded. Desperate, they decide to free themselves on their own and climb out through a hatch. When their lives are in great danger, a fight breaks out and the situation escalates completely. With every additional minute, this claustrophobic narrowness, the veil of superficiality lifts and reveals a glimpse into the human abyss that is much deeper than the elevator shaft beneath their feet. From 1984, 90 minutes, region-free 4K UHD Blu-ray, interview with actor Hans Janecki, interview with DP Jacques Stein, alternate version with SD inserts, isolated music track, English opening and end credits, opening and end credits textless, German theatrical trailer, gallery and English subtitles. Very curious. I do not like the price um, at all. <laughs> but I, I would pick this one up and I am torn between if, if I do manage to sell anything or get some money um, this one and this one. Although for roughly the same money I'm going to get uh, four movies as opposed to one. I will definitely be picking this up at some point in the future. If not immediately, maybe later on. Uh, we can but hope. And then that's it. That is it for the partner label stuff. It's a mixed bag. There's lots of things I would like to see, but not a lot I would like to own. Uh, I would like the box set of movies. I would like Out of Order. And I'm really curious about video violence. But like I said, the VS sale has hammered me. Hammered me good and proper that I do not have the money to buy these things, which isn't a bad thing. It's not a bad thing. So I will wait and see what I pick up. I would love to know because I want to live vicariously through you guys, what you are picking up. What are you getting? What movies really um, inspire you to get them? Is there anything I should know about these films? Let me know in the comment box below. As always, there's more content up here. You can see more of my stuff if you're interested. And if you want to click the like button below this video, all kinds of magic happens. And in the description box below, there are links to my Patreon and membership where you can join the channel and get more content. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on Man V Film.